Let's hear about it as I bring on my guest today, Plant Chompers, a.k.a. Chris McGaskill. Chris, thank you for being with me today. This was really shocking to me. Meat being fed and bred, animals being fed and bred to be more fatty over time. And I think the time frame that we're talking about, it's 1988 to today. Can you talk about how the animals are being bred? And I, I think most people think animals are natural. And just as clarification, um, you know, 80 billion animals on the planet in mm -hmm. factories, animal factories, 8 billion people on the planet. So 10 times more animals than people on Earth. That means 90 percent of the Earth's living, breathing entities are living in their own feces. But to snout, yeah. Yeah. it's very difficult to outrun a pandemic in those conditions. Mm -hmm. That's another conversation we'll talk or about e. in a second. Or E. coli. Exactly right. But um you know, just to understand the mass industry has nothing to do with like, the barn is red, the farmer yeah. is happy, he's gnawing on a piece of straw, right. and there are maybe four animals around a family of five for right. a family farm. That's not what we're talking about. And that's statistically not what the world is. So this is a very industrialized, non-natural situation. How are they making animals higher in fat? They uh, take a breed like Angus, and they say, wow, consumers really want marbled beef. They like the extra fat content. We're drawn to fat. It's, it's, we're, we're drawn to caloric density. We used mm -hmm. to live, we evolved in uh, an era of scarcity. And so we went after the highest caloric, caloric foods we could get. And fat has nine calories per gram and protein has four. So the fattier the meat, the more delicious it is. And the USDA even grades these, you know, prime and choice and you know, regular, and the fattier it is, the better the price it fetches. So the farmers, the ranchers, they're all trying to get marbled beef, and they'll mm -hmm. do that by feeding them grain, high-calorie foods. Uh, but there's a massive breeding program that's been going on for, I don't know, 50 years or something. It's true of chickens and sheep and, and cows, pigs. That's why pigs are so fat. And... Um, mm. And they've gotten, so if you go buy a, a McDonald's burger patty, typically it'll be 64% fat and 36% protein. And you think of it as a high protein food. It used to be, beef used to be, like other animals in the wild, 15% fat and 85% protein. If you go shoot something in the wild, it doesn't matter if it's a different species. The way cows used to be, they were high protein, low fat, but like bison are, or venison wow. is, or I think I need that. yeah, or giraffes are, or whatever. What the bushmen are eating in Africa, they're they're fifteen percent fat, eighty five percent protein. Not anymore. Now, if you go to the supermarket and you get eighty percent lean ground beef, um, that's eighty percent by weight lean, but by calories, it's more like seventy percent fat. So it's not a high protein food. Tofu is higher protein than that, and so. It's become extremely calorie dense, and mm. that 12 ounce steak you're buying at the steakhouse has many more calories now than it ever had before, more than double. And you're thinking, well, when I was a kid, I ate 12 ounce steaks all the time. Now they're even juicier and tastier and more irresistible. And why is the world, why has the United States gotten so obese? It's a mystery. Must be okay, the yeah. Doritos. <laughs> yes. I mean, some of the Doritos don't help. Um, but I would also argue that. And I get this from our world and data.org from the 60s, the early 60s, the meat consumption in the U.S. has gone up from, you know, low 100 pounds, I believe, to almost 300 pounds, 282 pounds as of 2019. Obviously, here in 2023, mm -hmm. we're even more. So you're looking at, you know, more than 100 percent growth of how much meat we eat. So maybe people ate 12 ounces as a kid, but most likely they ate four or six or maybe yeah. eight. I mm -hmm. mean, so and. and and now we have meat three times a day in enormous oversized quantities. So it's it's such simple math. It's not really hard to see why we're obese when we're eating more in general than we should. And then we're eating more of the wrong foods than we should. And these foods don't have any fiber. So going back to diabetes, yeah. you know, if you have that fiber, I know it's counterintuitive, folks, because you look at steak <laughs> and you're like, but it's fibrous looking. Yeah. At least it's fibrous looking. Oh, yeah. how, how could it not have fiber? But it's zero 
zero yeah. fiber in this very long human digestive tract, no fiber to move it through. Hey, should we talk about mm -hmm. colorectal cancer? Maybe we will, because that's kind of linked to this, but um, you know, no fiber going through the system. And so you're not clearing those cells either mm -hmm. that are, are wanting to get rid of that saturated fat and then they'd be better at um, counteracting diabetes. Anyways, yeah. it's all connected.